welcome to Onalaska United Methodist Church. Today is June 12th, 2022. It is our 8.30 service. I am not Pastor Park. I am Zoe. I am our youth and music director here at OUMC, and I am grateful to be able to be your preacher this morning. As you can see, um, we are back to wearing masks just because lacrosse levels are back to high, and we want to make sure that we are keeping um, our community safe as well as those that we're seeing um, throughout the rest of the week. Um, so we're going to start by... Uh, passing the peace and saying a warm hello to everybody around you and turning around and saying hi to the camera as well. Hello. So like I said, my name is uh, Zoe DeBoer. Today we have uh, Sandy Coster and the mini choir this morning doing music for us. Uh, we have Kelly who is going to read. Uh, we have Matt Goebel and Nick Marshall as well as John Goebel doing the booth and our ushers this morning were Jane and Gary Thompson. So thank you for everybody that's helping with our service this morning. We also have uh, some good mornings from online. Richard says good morning and Kay says Good morning, everybody. Spread the love. Have a wonderful week. Um, so, yeah, we can start with our call to worship. Please join me in the call to worship. Come, Holy Spirit, ignite our hearts with joy and confidence. For God has done wondrous things for us. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us with the power of the rushing wind that we may faithfully serve you in all that we do. For Christ has called each of us and blessed us. Come, Holy Spirit, be with us today. Help us to boldly proclaim Christ risen. Amen. Please join us in singing, How Great is Our God. The scripture today is from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. 
and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also in glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received. This is the end of the gospel. This morning, oh, I tripped on my dress. This morning, we have a uh, video from Paul Bratch for our children's message. Um, and I should say, I forgot to say that if you're watching online this morning and you would like to download our worship slides, you can go to onalaskaumc.org, find the section about today's service, download our worship slides. And um, if you want to send in a prayer request for later, you can text that to 608-304-7214. Um, and we can show Paul's video. Hey, good morning, everyone. Hope you're all doing well today. Uh, today in our kids' time, we want to talk about uh, a saying that goes, many hands make light work. Many hands make light work. What, what do you think that means? Hmm. Well, let's say I have a lot of laundry to do, which happens quite often. If I have to do it all by myself, it takes me a while. I gotta turn this right side out, figure out how to fold this thing. But uh, every once in a while, my kids, they help me out. And when we're all doing it together, it goes a lot faster. We can get a lot more done. My family has crab sitting right now for some friends of ours who went on vacation. We've got these hermit crabs in here that we're taking care of for them. A hermit is someone that spends all their time by themselves. They don't really spend time with anyone else. They're alone and they like to be that way. And you know, hermit crabs, they don't really get very much done. But have you heard of draft horses before? Draft horses are huge. They're very big horses and they can do a lot of work. They can pull heavy weights behind them a one draft horse can pull up to 8,000 pounds all by themselves. That's a huge amount, right? So if one draft horse can pull 8,000 pounds, what do you think two draft horses could do if they're pulling together? Well, 8,000 times two is 16,000. So you would think they could probably pull 16,000 pounds, right? But no, they can pull 24,000 pounds. When they're pulling together, they can pull so much more than they can when they're pulling by themselves. When they work as a team, they can get a whole lot more done. There's a verse in the Bible from a book called Ecclesiastes that says this, it's better to have a partner than to do it alone. Share the work and you'll share in the reward. So we don't want to be like these hermit crabs, do we? Doing everything all by themselves. We want to work together because we can do big things when we use teamwork. 
I want to show you one more cool thing. Guess what this is? Yep, a paper cup. Watch what happens when I step on it. It's flattened. But look at this. 12 paper cups. What do you think happens if I step on 12 paper cups? Let's find out. First, I'll put this on top, and I'll check this out. I'm standing. Look at that. The paper cups look good as new. So we don't want to be like these hermit crabs, do we? Just doing everything on our own? We want to be like those draft horses. We want to be like all of those paper cups that were put together. Because when we work together, when we use teamwork, we can do big things. All right, why don't you pray with me, please? God, we ask that you would help us to use teamwork. Would you help us to work together so that we can do big things to make our world a better place? Amen. Have a great day, everyone. Good to see you. Thank you, Paul, from wherever you are. He's really good, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> um, so our God moment today uh, comes, again, from part of our community, but all the way across the world. So as uh, we've heard the entire COVID saga, um, Pastor Park's son, Eric, is over in Europe, and um, he's going to share a video today about the Global Mission Fellows. Hi, on Alaska. My name is Eric Hunter, and I'm a Global Mission Fellow serving here at Wesley's Chapel and Lesian Mission in London, England. I'm coming to you today from the sanctuary of Wesley's Chapel in front of their quite lovely stained glass windows they have in their little apps. I'm not sure they're quite as nice as our stained glass window at the front of our church, though, but they tried their best, I suppose. It's been a few months since I shipped out of uh, on Alaska, so I thought I'd call and give you guys a little update on uh, what it's like living as a missionary in London, what my work at the chapel entails, and just show you around the chapel a little bit. Wesley's Chapel was originally built when John Wesley's first Methodist congregation outgrew the cannon foundry they were staying in and finally built themselves a chapel. At the time, though, because they were considered nonconformist, they were required to build their chapel 50 yards back from the road which gives us this lovely little courtyard space today. There's the fellow himself. Another reason Wesley's Chapel is built where it is is because it's directly across the street from the Bunhill Fields Cemetery. And if I don't time this right, you're about to watch me get hit by a bus live on camera. <coughs> Bunhill Fields was specifically the nonconformist, unconsecrated ground for burying troublemakers and the like. And it's now this beautiful green space directly across the street from Wesley's Chapel there. A number of interesting people are buried here, including Susanna Wesley, uh, John Bunyan, the author of Pilgrim's Progress, and William Bra Blake, the poet. Among other things, Wesley's Chapel is known as the Mother Church of World Methodism. It was right at the heart of the Methodist missionary movement during the old British Empire. So to many people around the world, when they think of Methodism, they think of Wesley's Chapel here. Uh, this is reflected in the fact that today, the majority of the uh, congregation are uh, actually uh, descended from the former empire. It's an incredibly diverse um, and rich congregation. Uh, the choir alone that I'm privileged to sing in has a half dozen uh, countries represented. Uh, and periodically the church has sort of informal food competitions between the different <laughs> countries represented. Uh, I've, I've been told that the Fijian High Commissioner won the last one for his country by having his embassy staff prepare the food for the event. Uh, for her part, the American superintendent of the chapel usually brings a tray of cornbread. Because of its political and geographic position, London and Wesley's Chapel have often been at the center of issues of migration, justice, and refuge throughout the years, uh, also in no small part because of the diversity of the congregation. Uh, so it's an issue very near and dear to the heart of the people at the chapel here. Um, in recent uh, months and years, there has been 
um, a large number of Syrian and Afghani refugees coming to London, and the response from the government and the community has not always been kind or supportive. Uh, so a big part of my ministry here is to help Wesley's Chapel uh, as a part of the community to develop a, a more robust uh, way of providing support and welcome and friendship to these newcomers uh, who can often have a very difficult transition to living in London. Um, we are aided in this by a partner program called Muswell Hill Welcomes at Muswell Hill Methodist Church nearby, uh, which I work at once a week, uh, both to help them in their ministry and to learn so that we can build a similar program here at Wesley's Chapel to provide a community space where Ukrainians can come and meet other Ukrainians, have their children play with other Ukrainians, uh, and meet council employees who will help them fill out applications and register with uh, general practitioners and other practical needs. A large part of my ministry here at the chapel takes place in the basement here by the museum, uh, where I'm also accompanied by the terrifying wall of John Wesley heads. <laughs> uh, this room is called the Philadelphia Room, and it's quite a cozy little space. It has uh, couches, tables, uh, everything for a, a little small group to meet, complete with terrifying 19th century portraits of Old Testament prophets looking down on us judgmentally. Um, but it's also where the kitchen is, and any good Methodist knows that food is the heart of a successful ministry. So I lead a group called the Holy Club, named in honor of John Wesley's first Holy Club at Oxford University. And we're really all about trying to rebuild a sense of community, particularly spiritual community for young people uh, who have been very cut off from each other and from their churches since the pandemic began. Uh, so the dream is that using food and using fellowship and discipleship, we can give these, uh, these um, young folks, well, folks my age, uh, a place to come back to church, a place to explore their faith, and a, a place to find other young people with whom to build relationships. This window, of course, depicts John Wesley's first missionary trip to Georgia, and it rather accurately depicts how well he was received by a number of people. But missionary service has always been a central part of the Methodist identity right from the very beginning. Today, the motto of the Global Missionary Service is from everywhere to everywhere. And there are currently 24 different countries serving in the Global Mission Fellows Program. Of course, uh, all missionary programs, like all Methodist programs, are supported through the generosity and enthusiasm of local churches. So if you would like to support my mission work or the mission work of any uh, Global Mission Fellow, you can go to the General Board of Global Ministries website and donate to any Mission Fellow specifically. I will put my advance number on the screen if you are interested. Otherwise, if you have any questions about my mission work or my ministry or the Global Mission Fellows in general or just what living in London is like, you can email me at gmf at wesleyschapel.org.uk. Thank you. We can give Eric, who's probably not watching because it's way later in the day, but let's give him a round of applause. All right, um, if you would, could join me in the confession and pardon. O oh Lord, you gather, protect, and care for us, your beloved, through word and spirit. This you have done from the beginning of the world and will do to the end. Have mercy upon us and forgive us for sinning against you. We have not loved one another as we should, we have not sown the seeds of gospel hope. We have not been present for worship. Restore us, Lord. May we give ourselves willingly and joyfully to be of benefit and blessing to one another, that we may truly share one faith, have one calling, and be of one soul and one mind. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hear these words of Jesus. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. In the midst of our fears and doubts, the peace of the Holy Spirit will prevail. Amen.
So in preparation for writing this sermon for today, I saw in our worship planner that the first Sunday after Pentecost is Trinity Sunday. Trinity Sunday is about grabbing a hold um, of as much of God as we can stand and then knowing that we only have a tiny, tiny piece. This Sunday should be a time of wonder and awe. An article on the United Methodist website about worship planning for this week explains that we should be careful when talking about God because we don't want our images or our descriptions to limit the vast greatness of God. If all of our descriptions are singular and simple, we are reducing the power of God and the Trinity into something easily understandable, which, sorry to break it to you, it isn't. One of my favorite classes from my undergrad was Theology of Justice and Peace. And in this class, we took some time to study the different depictions of God around the world and in different forms of media. When I went online and just searched God, um, this is what came up. Maybe I'm just speaking for myself, but when I think of the God that we all know, love, and believe in, this is not necessarily what I picture. Not that there's anything wrong with this, because this is the image that I think a lot of other denominations or a lot of other schools of belief picture they have in their, in their worship places, but this is, this is just not what I think of. I grew up imagining God to be an old white man with a long white hair and perhaps a crown, something like the guy on the, on the right. When I was little, my dad told me a story about God being a magic bubble with arms, which did make some sort of sense, but I think that this is the image of the Trinity, of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that most of us grow up seeing, especially in the Midwest uh, Methodist Church. I believe that there are a lot of beautiful things about having a Jesus that we can identify with and relate to, but Trinity Sunday is urging us to look farther. For one, historically, we know that Jesus was not white. In the Jewish tradition, it's actually forbidden to have or create photos of Jesus or God, and this is for two reasons. The first is that they believe that it would be misleading because when we think about it, God doesn't really have a form that we can comprehend. And so we're simplifying God by drawing a picture of him, and, then, and Jews just don't believe that we can do that. The second is that as soon as we, as humans, create an image that we can understand, we are going against the teachings of the Torah, which is the first five books of our Bible, and worshiping the image instead of God himself. So it's pretty clear that Christians don't admonish images of God. In fact, I think that they're something that we as Christians really celebrate. I will say personally, I love Christian artwork. I love to see paintings, sculptures, human renditions of God and Jesus, because I believe that we can learn about, we can learn a lot about people's humanity by the images that they produce. We can think of God as the father and the mother, as creator and lover. We can think of Jesus as the redeemer, the brother, master, teacher. I wanna share with you some of the diverse and beautiful pieces of art that I have come across. So these are two pictures of African-American or black Jesus. Um, I think they're absolutely beautiful and perhaps more historically accurate than the ones that we often see. You can change the slide. These are pictures of how Jesus is portrayed in China. Um, the one on the left is Jesus getting baptized by John the Baptist, and the one on the right is Mother Mary holding Jesus. You can change it again. Um, this one may be a little bit funny, but on the top left, we have John Legend playing Jesus in the live action, uh, what is it? Jesus Christ Superstar, yes, um, when they did a Broadway Live on NBC a couple years ago. On the right, we have the actor that plays Jesus in the TV show The Chosen, which started coming out and becoming really popular during COVID. Um, and on the bottom, we have God or Papa, um, played by a black woman in the movie The Shack. Um, I don't think that any of these depictions of Jesus and God are wrong or right. And like Trinity Sunday is trying to teach us, humans cannot comprehend the power of God. And ultimately we can't comprehend what God or Jesus even looked like. 
It's okay to wonder and be curious and push the boxes of what we think God looks like, which leads us to look right here in our church. When we look around our sanctuary every Sunday morning, we can see God so clearly in the faces of each and every one of us. When I searched our church on Google Images, it and almost made me cry because it is just pre-COVID <laughs> and just look how many of us there were. I think that this was a special Sunday. It was probably cantata, so it was like even more busy than normal, but it was just insane that we used to have this many people. Um, John and Charles Wesley, the founders of the Methodist movement, placed particular emphasis on what they called practical divinity. They believed that all people could experience the grace and love of God and that a Christian life meant putting faith and love into action. We can take this one step further and say that when we look around at each other at OUMC, we can see God's faith and love in action. One of my favorite lines from the musical Les Mis um, by Victor Hugo is, to love another person is to see the face of God. And I think that that's really true. When we look around at each other, we see how much love we have for each other as a community, and we can see God right here in each and every one of us. A few sermon series ago, Park did a sermon about how each of our personal and unique gifts are special and important to our church community and to our world. I think about how beautiful all of our unique gifts are when we see them all working together. I can speak only for myself, but I have witnessed beautiful examples of my community here at OUMC stepping up and helping me out. When I was trying to fix uh, a rip in my carpet a couple months ago, I called Bob Matson, called him on FaceTime, and I'm like, Bob, what do I do to help this? And he, he talked me through some ideas, and <laughs> it, was, it was so wonderful that I just had somebody that I could call and say, I don't know how to fix this carpet. Can you help? When a U-Haul rental fell through, the Halsteads were there lending me their truck, and they even wrote me a card, and they left it on the driver's seat. When my whole family got COVID right when I was about to move, Park offered to help me and Ben move, despite being in the middle of a huge cross-state move himself. When I first came on staff in 2020, Sandy was always incredibly helpful, making sure that I had plenty of copies of whatever songs I chose to sing on Sunday. When the butter braids were getting delivered last month for the high school mission trip fundraiser, I was really stressed because I knew that the freezers downstairs were jam packed. Um, when I came into work early on the day of delivery and I was gonna start cleaning them out, I was shocked to find out that Becky Barnes and Kathy Edel had already done it. I was so happy and it just a miracle that that had happened. Um, I didn't actually write this because this happened last night, but, uh, the church that our youth group was going to stay at on our way down to Alabama this summer canceled on us for our uh, overnight stay and our, our trip is in less than a month. So I was freaking out, but I posted on this global UMC Facebook page and just said, does anybody have a church within an hour from Memphis that could help us out and let us stay there? And probably 30 or 40 churches responded right away saying, here's our contact, give us a call on Monday. Something that I, I never expected. I was thinking it was a long shot to even post on that page. So I'm a huge Harry Potter nerd. So if, if you guys don't like Harry Potter, you probably won't understand this, but there's a room in Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. It's called the Room of Requirement. The concept of this room is that if somebody walks past the door thinking about what they need, the room will appear equipped to answer the needs of whoever's walking past. So J.K. Rowling writes in Harry Potter, the Room of Requirement only appears when a person has real need of it, and it is always equipped for the seeker's needs. The character Ron says, so say you really needed a toilet, and Hermione says, yes, that's the idea. Sometimes I feel like our church is its own room of requirement. Whatever our community needs, somebody or some group of people in our church steps up to, to provide. So we're gonna do a little bit of an activity. It's really not that big of a deal, you can stay seated. But um, we're gonna look around and just take in the people that are here today. I'm gonna list off a bunch of groups and I don't wanna say clubs, but teams and committees and groups that we have here at church. And I just want you to raise your hand if you have or have 
ever been a part of those. And we can see just here today how many people are involved in this big spider web of things and people here at our church. So raise your hand if you've ever come to a church service on a Sunday morning. I, I thought so. <laughs> raise your hand if you have ever gone to a coffee hour. Mm -hmm. Raise your hand if you are a member of a committee, worship planning committee, SPRC, reconciling committee, COVID-19 committee, or any more. All right. Raise your hand if you have ever volunteered in or dropped your kid off at the nursery. Raise your hand if you have ever been involved with puppets. <laughs> Raise your hand if you have ever been involved with vacation Bible school. Raise your hand if you have ever been involved in Sunday school, either, either as a teacher or as a student. Raise your hand if you've ever been involved with SOAR, SOAR Junior, or Confirmation. Raise your hand if you have ever been involved with Stephen Ministry. How about Mission Stitchers? Um, have you ever been to Pine Lake? How about Men's Fellowship? or been on a women's retreat, or you're part of the praise team, or the choir, or have you been part of the cantata? Raise your hand if you have ever eaten at or volunteered at a community dinner. Raise your hand if you have ever volunteered with or bought something from Scrip. Raise your hand if you have ever been a member of or taught an adult Sunday school or small group. So I'm sure that there are many more I was trying to think, and I, I only know what I know, I guess, if that makes sense. I only know what I've seen or what I've been a part of, so I'm sure that there are many more groups that I just am not even aware, which is also so cool that there are so many things that are happening um, kind of underground, and I'm sure that there are people doing things behind the scenes who probably feel like what they aren't, what they're doing isn't necessarily appreciated, and I'm telling you right now in front of everybody here that every act of service done for and in this church is God shining through each and every one of you. Our community could not continue to thrive in the way that it does without the work and the willingness of everyone in the sanctuary, everybody watching online, everybody involved in the many, many things that you do. So as we have seen over the past couple of weeks, Pastor Park has been handing the baton off to um, people. So today I'm gonna be passing uh, the baton to somebody that has volunteered and given time to this church in so many different ways, but I think we all can know her as the queen of puppets. <laughs> she has been leading our puppet ministry. She has done incredible crafting, sewing jobs, things that I am amazed that you can even produce. And you have been a loyal member of music. So Peggy Bettens, here is the baton. And we, we are very appreciative of all, all the work that you do for UMC. <laughs> so if you could sign that and... I do need it back for second service, so. <laughs> so I can pass it to somebody else. Um, but anyway, that concludes our sermon for today. But just know that all of your work is appreciated, and even just being here is, is adding to the community that makes OUMC such a vibrant place.
As we move into our time of prayer, um, if you have a joy or concern to share out loud, John will run the microphone over to you. Just say a short prayer, including the person that you're praying for his first name. Um, if you would like to text your prayer request in, you can send it to 608-304-7214. Um, during the week, you can send prayer requests to office at Onalaska United, or sorry, office at onalaskaumc.org or call the office at 608-783-3380. So if you have a prayer request and you'd like to share, you can raise your hand. I've got kind of a selfish request, but we are leaving for South Dakota this coming Friday and um, wishing for safe travels. Thank you. Lord, we ask for safe travels and for a really fun trip. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I uh, have a joy this morning. It is my best friend's 23rd birthday, so just a joy that Maddie's turning 23 today. I have prayers for um, Annette and Sandy, who are both dealing with the last stages of cancer. Lord, we ask for healing and peace for Sandy and Annette. In your mercy, hear our prayers. And I have a joy. Everybody was asking how Garrett, my son, was doing. And um, he did get out of the hospital finally last Friday afternoon and made it to his son's wedding on Saturday. So that was quite a joy. And he's doing better. Thank you for all your prayers. Lord, we give you thanks. Lord, thank you for watching over our community week after week, month after month, year after year. It is so amazing to see the work that you do in our community and the hand that you keep over all of our members as well as our family and friends. We ask for prayers of safe travel, for healing, for peace, and we celebrate birthdays and healing and weddings and love, and we ask that you continue to watch over our community. If you could join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, If you would like to give an offering this morning online, you can go to give.onalaskaumc.org. Otherwise, you could bring your offering to the office throughout the week or drop it in one of the plates out on your way out of the sanctuary this morning. While we give thanks for everything that we have in our community, the choir is going to be sharing a gift of music.
Lord, we give these gifts of offering freely. We receive these gifts gratefully. We dedicate these gifts to the work of our congregation, serving human wholeness, caring for our planet, upholding religious freedom, welcoming the stranger, loving one another. We dedicate these gifts to the work of this congregation, weaving a tapestry of compassion and action, faith and fellowship, hope and wholeness. We dedicate these gifts to the work of this congregation and we affirm our lives within it. There is no church without its people. We are this church. We are all it means inside these walls and all it stands for out in the world. We dedicate these gifts to the church we embody with our hands and our heart. Amen. All right, we have just a few announcements today. First of all, thank you all for worshiping with us this morning. Um, you can always go back and watch the service on our YouTube channel. You can access our worship slides and the sermon on, on Alaska United Methodist Church website. Um, we are in a time of transition right now, so usually Park says, if you wanna get in touch with me, call the office, but uh, I think next week is his last week. So um, call the office and we will get you in touch with somebody. It may just not be Park right away. Actually, it won't be Park, but it will, may, may not be our, anyway, I don't know. I don't know. Somebody will contact you. Somebody will answer and it will be awesome. Um, this coming Tuesday is our community dinner. It starts at 5.30, um, and it's a drive-through. The young adult um, ministry group is going to be volunteering, but we do still need a couple more people. So if you are a young adult and you would like to serve dinner, contact me. Um, we also have directory photos available this coming Thursday, next Sunday, which is the 19th in between services, and um, for the next three weeks during the week by appointment. So you can call the office or email the office to get a hold of Melissa and she will help you schedule your directory photo. Um, I don't think there's anything else for me. Does anyone else have any? Oh, oh, okay, I'm gonna turn the mic off so that Park can't see this if he watches back. All right, I think we can close our service with a song.
thank you all for coming today. And I hope that you have a blessed weeks to come and, or sorry, blessed days in the week to come. Um, bring God's grace out into the world as you go and have a wonderful, wonderful week.